All right, so we have what should be a, an entertaining fight, and as long as it lasts. We've got Jamal Hill versus Paul Craig. So Jamal Hill, he's got a 1-inch height advantage and a 3-inch reach advantage over Paul Craig. He definitely has the advantage on the feet. He comes in as a southpaw. He's very good at using his length and keeping opponents at the end of his strikes, and I think that's what he'll want to do here because Paul Craig, he's not much of a striker. He's not much of a threat on the outside. He's more of a threat when he, uh, you know when you get in the grappling exchanges with him. Yeah, I think Jamal would definitely be the aggressor here. I mean, Paul Craig, he's constantly backing up to the fence. Uh, he's, yeah, he's just constantly backing up, honestly. And Jamal Hill, he tries pretty hard to get the outside foot when he's versing an orthodox fighter, and then he can land the one twos, the two threes. That's his combination that he generally tends to go to. Teeps to the body on orthodox opponents straight knees at distance, especially when his opponent looks to close distance or is a shorter fighter. And yeah, I just, I just don't, I'm not really going to spend too much time breaking down the stand-up. It's it's not going to be pretty if it stays on the feet. So I think Paul Craig's going to look to get it onto the mat any way possible, really. Uh, he, he goes for a hip toss in the clinch. He's pretty relentless with his takedowns when he does go for takedowns. And if he can't, you know, if he can't get you down, he'll just pull guard. And he pulls guard quite frequently because his takedowns aren't very good. And off bottom, he'll go for triangles, arm bars. He'll take the opponents back when they turn if he does end up in top position or just generally in a scramble. He looks to, you know, take the back. But yeah, he's, he's quite dangerous off his back, I guess. And he has good submission defense on top. But yeah. So how Jamal Hill wins, he has good volume and he seems to be very composed for being so young in his career. I like the composure that he brings into the octagon, and he seems like he has a good chin as well. But, you know, concerning striking tendencies that he does have, I didn't mention them before because, you know, Paul Craig's not going to put it on him or just <laughs> expose them, really, so I didn't bother mentioning them. Uh, but, it, you know, it does look like his takedown defense does need a little bit of work. And for Paul Craig, how he loses is that he gasses after one and a half rounds and he has terrible striking defense and a uh, suspect chin. Uh, so past the victory for these two, obviously for Paul Craig, look to back him up near the fence, look to shoot, look for submissions once you do get him on the map, pull guard if you can't get him down and look for reversals or, you know, submissions off bottom. Uh, for Jamal Hill, don't bother with the outside foot battle, like it, it it's just going to bring you closer to the fence if he does get the read on it and understands what you're trying to do. He's just going to try and, you know, take his outside foot near the fence so then you're near the fence and then he'll look for his takedown, so... You know, he's stand-up shit enough that you don't really have to worry about where your feet are. And look for the straight left to the body. He can't really shoot underneath when you go to the body. Look for the one-twos. I mean, he doesn't move his head. Look to extend combinations, because he pretty much just backs up. As soon as you throw a combination, he'll just back up straight to the fence. Not really throwing anything as a counter. Maybe a level change, so you have to watch out for that. Don't get too over-aggressive with your hip placement, but, you know, just tee off on him pretty much if he's backing up. And also, if he throws any uh, leg kicks, just return with low calf kicks. And look for teeps to the body. So yeah, but just be careful when throwing like an intercepting knee when he shoots. Like, because generally when he's shooting, he drives through on his knees. So he's literally, <laughs> he's literally grounded as he's shooting. So, you know, it's not something you usually have to worry about. But the way he shoots his takedowns and how he tries to finish... Like, yeah, he's he's grounded, so I can definitely see Paul Craig copping a knee and just pulling an absolute Aljo masterclass. I can already see that in my head. Pretty much just look to stuff the takedown and disengage. It's not worth throwing the knees when you have such a huge advantage at range. Also, don't engage with him unless you've got him really badly rocked on the mat. So if you knock him down and he's he looks like he's pretty heavily concussed, then you can go down and look to finish him from there, but, you know, don't, don't even bother. Alright, so how I see this fight going, so yeah, if this fight plays out on the feet, I think Hill hurts him bad, I think he probably gets put out, just like Paul Craig's other UFC losses, it's either, you know, he finds a submission or he gets put out, pretty much. Yeah, even if Jamal does get taken down, I don't think the fight's over by any means, like, I honestly don't think Craig is that high level of a grapple, honestly, he's just got a few moves that you need to watch out for, but he does have a viable path to victory here, like, with the question marks around Jamal Hill's takedown defense, how bad it looked in the Stosic fight, you know, Craig's going to look to take advantage of that. Hill does look to be very composed in there, but he's too young in his MMA career. You know, he only turned pro three and a half years ago. He's too young for me in his MMA career, for me not to trust him to make a mistake on the map or not to show poor fight IQ. 
like such as engaging in the guard game of Paul when he doesn't really need to. Like, if you look at Paul Craig's record, half of his 14 wins are from triangle from bottom position. Like, if, you get, if you're getting subbed by a triangle in the UFC, I think you should be cut immediately, honestly. And I'm only, like, half joking with that shit. Like, there's no excuse for getting caught in a triangle at this level. Like, it's one of the easiest submissions to defend, uh, let alone let somebody, some like, set up on you. It just boggles my mind how it keeps getting them. Uh, so, Paul Craig, you know, good guy. Great guy. I love his story. I love his background story. But he's an absolutely terrible fighter. And if I could be real, I have no idea how he keeps winning. Like, who the fuck led him into the rankings? He doesn't, he shouldn't be anywhere near that. That just shows how, how shallow the light heavyweight division is at the moment. And in the Antigulov fight, like, I feel like Antigulov could have got out of that triangle anytime he wanted to. And he pretty much did a few times. He got out of the triangle and he kept putting his head back in it while Craig took an eternity to lock up the triangle. So I, I was on Antigulov there. I have no idea what he was doing there. Uh, but yeah, not to be like conspiratorial, but you know, both Ankalaev and Antigulov come from the same camp and they both got subbed by Craig with the same submission in a very suspicious manner, in my opinion. So I hope those guys paid off those debts to those mobsters that they obviously owed uh, and hopefully they can get on with their careers now. Uh, so if Jamal Hill finishes OSP and Clidson Abreu, only to lose to Paul Craig, I'd be seriously perplexed and maybe even a little frustrated. <laughs> like, he should win this fight. If he doesn't show poor fight IQ, he should win this fight. And I think it is it is his fight to lose, so barring any brain farts, I think he should win here. My prediction is uh, Jamal Hill by KO in round one. I think he gets it done around 75 to 80% of the time. I think he should get the win here. Uh, just in case Paul Craig does pull off like another meme triangle from bottom or something like that, and Jamal Hill or Jamal Hill engages him on the ground when he really shouldn't, then you know I'd probably play Paul Craig by submission if it was above five dollars, which I'm expecting it to be. So, you know, I think that happens. What is that? Like around twenty percent of the time. Like if you're gonna give Paul Craig twenty to twenty five percent, if you're gonna cap Paul Craig at twenty five percent winning this fight, then around 20% of the time he's going to be winning by submission so I think any anything over $5 I'm going to bet Paul Craig by submission I'm hoping for around $6 though something better than that and if Jamal Hill got to $1.45 or minus two twenty, then I'd probably bet him small just because of the unknowns I'm a little concerned but yeah if he gets to that price then I'd probably bet him there